On this series of Rewinder, I wanted to look beyond the post bag. And I spotted this from Miles Myasco Harris. He took to TikTok to do a rewinder of his own last week. He was rummaging around his dad's attic and discovered some amazing boxes of photographs. I decided to get in touch with him because I know his dad very well, and you will too. Introduce yourselves. Hi, Greg. I'm Miles. Hello, Greg. I'm Bob Harris. Bob and Miles, welcome to Rewinder. I've never had a guest on Rewinder. You're my first guests. We're very, very honoured. This is a privilege. So, Miles, tell me what you found up in Bob's attic, please. So, there'd been a box sitting at my dad's house for a long time with just the word Bob on the front of it. So, one day, I just decided to delve into the box to see what was in there. And it's dozens of old contact sheets that were obviously made by the original photographer on the old grey whistle test back in the 70s called Alan Messer. And the first thing that came into view was just this entire page of amazing shots of Elton John sat at the piano. Well, it must have been amazing for you to look at these again. What, what were your thoughts when you first laid eyes on them? In a way, you know, it's like being parachuted back into that little studio because we couldn't afford to dress the studio. So nowadays, when I look at these photographs and when you see any of the footage from the old Grey Whistle Test of that time, it has such a look. It really, it couldn't be anything else (laughs) but Whistle Test. And looking at these photos now, they're gold dust. It really is quite amazing to see them again. Are you much of an archivist yourself? I can see behind you, for example, on the video screen, is just a wall of (laughs) CDs. (laughs) Yes. I've got all the originals, all the original interviews and everything. So, yes, uh, I really, I treasure them, Greg, to be honest. I mean, I I think they're, I don't know, they're important in some way. I don't really even quite know how. I just feel that they're a point of history, you know. Let's talk about some of your fondest memories of Whistle Test. Do you have one that sticks out? I always say John Lennon, meeting John Lennon in New York in 1975. The inevitable question. Are they ever going to get back together? Yeah. Elton John and I got to know each other and he was telling me that he was leaving for New York and he said don't tell anybody but John Lennon is going to be appearing with me. I said to Elton well when you see John if you tell him we would love to do something with him. You see it's strange because at one period when they're asking me I say no never what the hell go back no not me and then they came to a period when I thought well why not if we've got something to say in a studio okay. A few days later, I was sitting in the office at Television Centre and the phone rings and Mike Appleton answers the phone. You know, he goes, BBC Television, the old Grey Whistle Test. And uh, I heard this voice at the other end of the line go, oh, is Bob Harris there, please? Oh, it's John Lennon. Now, when I'm saying that, I, I turn the paper and George is saying, not me, right? It's never got to a position where every, every, each one of us have wanted to do it at the same time. I think over the period of being apart, we've all thought that wouldn't be bad, you know. And John said, just come over, let's do something. So Mike and I flew out there and we spent a couple of days with him in New York. And it was at exactly the time that he and Yoko had discovered that she was pregnant with Sean. So John was so happy and we got on so well. It was one of the most wonderful moments, not just of my career, but of my life. I mean, I've worked with Ringo. I've worked with Ringo and George. I haven't worked with Paul because we had a more difficult time, but now we're pretty close. And the other question is, would it be worth it? You know, but that is answered by if we wanted to do it. If we wanted to do it, then it'd be worth it. If we got in a studio together and thought we, we turn each other on again, then it would be worth it. You know. Looking straight at me on the wall over there is, is the autograph from John that he signed to Bob on the day of the interview. It's such an unassuming little thing, isn't it, Bob? It's like on yeah. a, it looks like sort of A4 like school paper with lines on it and he's drawn a little sheep and stuff. Yes. There's knickknacks like that all over the studio, which is, it's always hilarious. I come in here and I ask Bob about something and there'll be some crazy story that goes back into some legends history somewhere. Well, Miles, Bob, brilliant to have you as my first guests on Rewinder. And uh, I, I imagine people will be inspired to go and look at their own Bob's attic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we could have attic offs as the series continues inspired by bob so if you have found something amazing in your own multimedia storeroom then of course send it my way you can email rewinder at bbc.co.uk the new feature what's in bob's attic that's great thank you thank you greg that was, uh, cheers well, greg pleasure. see you soon oh lovely bob what a great first guest oh i've just heard the game's over